Welcome everybody, this is SharePoint Dev Ecosystem PMP Community Call and it is April 2020 edition, the monthly community call. Uh, it is April 14th, 2020. My name is Sasa Yuvon and I'm a program manager uh, in the Microsoft in the OneDrive SharePoint uh, platform team. So today uh, we're going to do a quick recap on latest uh, news. It's not only actually about SharePoint development, definitely. New news and updates and summaries and other stuff. And we're going to talk about slightly user voice and, and uh, those kind of things, which we always do in the monthly community calls. We're also going to have a look on the, the community contributors for this month. Um, I do apologize. I, I, I have a slide on this one as well. Our monthly blog post, which is the long one where we list what has happened within the last month, is slightly delayed uh, because yesterday was a public holiday. Um, writing that one is quite time consuming. And then today's main topic uh, is building multilingual portals with modern SharePoint capabilities. Uh, we have DC Badur, who is the program, uh, program manager and uh, the PM owner of this feature doing the presentation. And he's backed up uh, at least with Matt Muti on the call, um, who's actually the, the uh, engineer genius behind of the implementation. So uh, that's how we work in Microsoft. We have the PMs who actually spec out things and how they should be working. And then there's the, the, the I would have, well, is it fair to say the real talent, right, Matt, uh, who's actually implementing yeah. whatever the, the PM is getting? <laughs> I <right>? wouldn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you, Matt, for that. <laughs> cool. So uh, let's actually get back on the on the track of things. Uh, and again, I'm sharing my screen, so I'm not going to give anybody access on the on the slides. Now, and then if we have time, we'll do a QA and uh, a in the end as well. But most likely, uh, we'll, we can do a Q&A during the DC presentation. We're going to follow up on the chat window. Uh, and please feel free on having discussions in chat. I uh, will jump in those uh, as needed as well. Now let's actually get moving on the things. Typical slides, few things just to recap are, let's say, circles of community and the, the different areas of the community. We have the SharePoint Dev developer community or SharePoint community in the tech community, Microsoft tech community, and where you can go and have a chat and questions, ask questions from the PMs as well. Anybody who's in the in the community can do that. We also have our bi-weekly SharePoint framework community call. Next one is on 23rd of April, where we actually concentrate on SharePoint framework, so building Microsoft Teams tabs or personal applications or SharePoint uh, web parts and extensions using the SharePoint framework. And then we have the bi-weekly SharePoint general dev, which has been actually kind of a reposition to be a general Microsoft 365 dev bi-weekly call because we cover, for example, Yo Teams there and a few other things as well. So every single Thursday, we have a community call at 7 a.m. Pacific time. Why 7 a.m.? Well, it's a compromise between the different time zones and trying to maximize uh, the reach uh, across, the, across the world. And then we have this monthly community call where we try to concentrate more on the engineering and product group driven messaging um, and typically have some PM or engineers doing a, a Microsoft driven demo in this course. By the way, on this week's uh, Thursday call, we kind of, for example, talk about uh, the upcoming taxonomy APIs, so live demos of the taxonomy APIs, uh, which are kind of get released really, really, really soon, and a few other things as well. Now, quick recap on the different addresses. There's so much stuff out there, uh, but want to make sure that people actually have all of the URLs, AKMS and 365 PMP videos. There's some extra 365 SharePoint community videos location. We have open source stuff, plenty of open source stuff. We're going to go to the numbers next uh, in a second. SharePoint framework is available from a documentation perspective. We have hundreds of samples available for you to take advantage. Um, and please use the AKMS SPFX web parts and AKMS SPFX extensions uh, to actually access those samples because they are awesome gallery uh, sample galleries, which will help you to find what's relevant for you. And Hugo Bernier has been uh, really the mastermind behind of that. And then we have the SharePoint Dev issues for those uh, developers questions, which for those customers who do not have a premier support, they can ask questions and there's other people in the community who are helping in the GitHub as well. Now, quick recap on the numbers. Uh, so the community uh, is growing really fast um, and we do have a massive uh, growth uh, in here. So we have 24% increase on the SharePoint framework usage uh, within March, which is quite significant. To be fair, overall, the cloud usage grew tremendously in March due to obvious reasons. Um, we had uh, almost 50,000 views in the in the BMP YouTube channel. We have 247,000 watch time minutes in the YouTube channel as well. So plenty of views, plenty of activities over there. 
It's good to say that those videos are considered valuable. Um, there was totally 76,445 uh, visitors in our GitHub or our organizations, which really shows the growth of the ecosystem as well. So people are finding samples are, and our open source projects, which I'm not that's surprised. Just uh, in in general, there's more than one million SharePoint developers in over the world, so uh, we can easily get to seventy-five thousand or one hundred thousand views and visitors in a month. We had 6, 8,977 requests worldwide using uh, coming through the open source uh, BMP components every single second, and that's a mind-blowing number, but it really shows how widely uh, those components are actually used as well. And that's besides core, BMP PowerShell, BMP JavaScript, those things which are abstracting uh, the complexity of APIs uh, for you to easily get access. For more than 40,000 tenants are using those, and uh, the tenant templates provisioning was used more than 4,000 tenants, and overall we have 1,298 contributors in the GitHub organization. So quite interesting and awesome numbers, uh, so thank you for being active uh, from your side as well. Now, some new stuff. Uh, this is something which, we, which went live uh, last week, actually. Uh, we used uh, the SharePoint blog for that one because it's not really a dev topic as such. But as part of the, the success on the dev area around open source and documentation and open source projects and samples, we want to actually extend the similar kind of mindset and thinking to non-dev areas as well. So as part of this thinking and, and direction, uh, we released this new Microsoft 365 community docs and community documentation. And this is really intended for anybody to be able to contribute on the documentation rather than maybe writing it only to your blog as an article and, and maybe people that can't find it, let's actually concentrate or let's centralize the stuff to a one location so people can easily find it. And you can absolutely submit the same article to your own blog or in, in this location as well. But this is really intended for those people who are writing awesome stuff to get visibility through the Microsoft channels as well. AKMS M365 Community Docs. And there's a nice blog post available from the SharePoint blog related on what this means in practice. Just a reminder also on our PMP Weekly, what's slightly, uh, let's say, getting more and more rebranded. It was called uh, SharePoint Dev Weekly in the past, but we nowadays we're covering in non-dev areas uh, in this course as well. Really also depends who is our visitor, because every single week we usually have a MVP or a normal community member as a visitor in these things. Everything is available, obviously, in the video or podcast format. Quick recap on the user voice, uh, just a, a uh, recap of what's happening in here. Not a massive amount of, uh, let's say, changes in here. And the number one, uh, rec the most requested thing is the support for .NET Core with Season, and, and basically then SharePoint and the PowerShell after that and all that. And that is something that is being actively worked on. We are getting closer and closer. We know that we've been working on this one now for a few years, and we understand that the ecosystem customers and partners really need to have it. So it is coming. Uh, it is being actively worked on, but we need to be still patient. It's not going to happen this week, but I would say rather weeks than months, which is actually pretty cool. So we're looking into getting it out uh, before summer. That is now uh, absolutely the plan. Um, what's also really cool is that the number three in this list, uh, add manage metadata terms to our operations to REST API, is actually now getting out. Uh, so on Thursday's call, we will have a 15-minute sneak preview what's actually coming, and that's going to be announced uh, pretty soon. Uh, I would say almost more than days rather than weeks. So, so happening quite, quite, quite soon as well. Um, but other than that, not a massive amount of, uh, let's say, changes on the top 10 list of uh, dev areas or extensibility requests, uh, also due to the fact of the, of the COVID situation. So uh, clearly some of our development is slightly slowing down, but to be fair, I, I think we've been surprisingly successful on keeping things running and, and keeping uh, keep on shipping stuff as well. But bear with us, uh, we will absolutely want to address all of the requests as well. Quick uh, recap also on a really interesting topic. Uh, so we are growing our PMP team quite significantly. There will be a blog post later this week, which is explaining the model and explaining uh, the new people as well. The BMP is really the group of MVPs and internal Microsoft people who are coordinating our open source and uh, community efforts. And since this area has been so dramatically growing within the past years, we are 
quite significantly also growing our BMP team. So just a sneak peek uh, of the, all of the people who are now part of the team, and you will see more and more of these people being active in the GitHub and open source and in our community efforts. And that's the way how we scale. The problem what we've been having in the past is that we just don't have enough time and the 24 7 uh, 24 hours in a day is not enough to actually manage all of the incoming stuff for the open source stuff as well so we are trying to solve that by extending the team and also introducing quite a few new projects uh, around the Microsoft Teams as an example and also on other areas on the on the SharePoint and OneDrive side as well but a lot of people who are actively involved in this in the future so letting everybody know on that Thank you, by the way, for MVPs for volunteering uh, on doing these things as well. Um, the April 2020 uh, update, uh, the blog post, which is listing all of the latest changes and all of that stuff, is coming pretty soon. Uh, it is actually pending on my time to write it out. Uh, we, we have already all of the contributors, we have all of the components, but really making sure that we list out all of the awesomeness, what you have contributed, is still missing from the blog post. So it will go out later today or tomorrow, um, but we, the amount of uh, companies who've been already involved is still, uh, or is already up, updated. And based on that one, we obviously also updated the list of people who contributed within the last month to our open source and community efforts. So this includes contributions to the documentation, samples and galleries, and let's say community demos and all of that stuff is actually listed in here. And now, I, now that I said it, I actually miss tree will. A bow from tree mill is missing from this list, and I do apologize on that one. And that means that I am missing the tree wills logo from this uh, screen as well. So I do apologize on that. But this is also the group of uh, companies who've been closely involved within our open source efforts within the last month, or those companies which we have a permission to show their logo as part of our messaging. And by the way, again, I will add the tree wills logo in here as well. I do apologize of missing that. From the Microsoft side of the house, uh, the list of people uh, is also growing. Um, and it's nice to see that we're getting more and more also internal PFEs and TSPs actually contributing and escalation engineers contributing on our open source side of the house. Obviously, there's a set of PMs and engineers already who've been uh, there for a while as well. But that was a quick, quick, super quick uh, update because I didn't want to take too much time uh, on the presenters. Uh, and so we can concentrate on the multilingual portals uh, with the SharePoint Online. Once again, thank you everybody who contributed uh, on our open source efforts within the past month. And we can already see a massive amount of contributions for April. So thank you for those as well. We'll definitely keep on, keep on calling you out uh, in the community calls and showing your names in the official blog post as well. But I think that's it from my side. So DC is waiting eagerly on the line of getting access and showing cool stuff. Thank you. Thank you, Vesa. Thanks for the introduction. That's uh, that's fantastic. Great to hear all the cool stuff happening with our community here. And thank you for the invitation to join this call. I'm really excited to get back on the call and uh, share some of the new stuff that we've been working on and do an actual live demo, walk through the examples and answer questions. So I have a couple of my colleagues on the line. Matt Muti, as I mentioned, he's my technical lead on this program. I believe I have Tony Saylor, who's our design researcher on the call as well. And I'm not sure if Loreen, who's also our content writer, is on the call. But we're all here to answer your questions and uh, walk you through the experience today. Uh, my own special guest is Julie Turner, who, uh, who's uh, very actively en engaged with our PNP community and she's been working on multilingual for a while and she might jump and answer some of the questions based on her expertise and experience with the API usage of this feature since early on. She's been working closely with us and uh, I really appreciate her being on this call and offering to help answer uh, specific targeted questions. I'm not watching the chat window, so I'm assuming Vesa, Matt, you would uh, jump in and answer questions or if you think I should address it widely, uh, you know, by speaking to it rather than just typing the answers, please feel free to interrupt me at any time. And sure. uh, we can get going with that. So let's get started. So the feature we are here to talk about specifically is the multilingual publishing experience that just recently started shipping. This is for the modern SharePoint communication sites platform. The demo here is going to focus on how does the how do we build an actual portal using this feature? So the, sometimes it's uh, it helps for the 
product owners to be able to place the feature in the context of the larger end user experience or the customer experience and what is the outcome they would wish to drive and how does the feature fit into the larger context. So that's that's sort of the uh, goal of this call. And of course, I'm hoping many of you have already taken this feature for a ride in your targeted release tenants. Uh, this feature is right now already rolled out to the targeted release entire organization customers. Because this is a, a site level feature, you can't enable it for specific users. So that's why we have rolled it out to the targeted release entire organization uh, tenants and it's done. We hope to have it generally available uh, starting in the next couple of weeks. Hopefully by end of May, it'll be generally available for all the clouds, uh, including the government clouds. So there's a more information link and I'm pretty active on uh, Twitter. So feel free to hit me up. Uh, I have several folks that have already hit me up with uh, feedback and we really appreciate that and we'll, we'll, we're working on improving our documentation and also take feature uh, improvement feedback as well. So coming to the, the core of this, essentially this feature, the multilingual publishing feature was designed to help top level information portals for customers to help them build that for a diverse audience and by diverse audience I mean folks that uh, like to consume content in their preferred language as opposed to uh, the you know typically published language. There is always a language variation around uh, you know, information consumption. And especially in these times with lots of folks working from home and being diverse, uh, globally uh, distributed and uh, you know working from different time zones and language barriers, it's extremely important to have a sense of community. And it's great for the internet experience for those uh, users to be available in their language so they can feel connected and they'll feel like they belong to a community even though they are uh, geographically and linguistically separated in many kinds. So that's the goal of this feature. That's the scenario we want to unblock. And we have a, a basic MVP ex uh, uh, experience that we have shipped out with the publishing experience that ties in together and ha delivers a great experience for the end users along with the content creators and the folks that set up the site. Uh, a quick setting of the context and the scope. So obviously we are supporting multilingual pages and news in uh, communication sites. That's the scope of the project right now. It also involves uh, the site name, site language, the, the site navigation and the site uh, footer, hub navigation, all of these things together deliver the internet site experience. And that's part of the experience today that we're going to be working on. Um, there is no auto translations. The content is to be provided by the content owners. So that's an important uh, uh, aspect to remember. What we are doing here is enabling the publishing system that brings multiple language content together and makes it easy for publishing and importantly consuming the content as well. So we're not focusing on collaboration scenarios and we most definitely are not reinventing variations uh, uh, in the in the modern uh, digital workplace experience. We have, we have completely rethought what it means to have a multilingual publishing and we are putting uh, our concepts and our uh, research focused approach into our uh, feature experience. So uh, going into the demo, I'm going to do this slightly different. So I'm going to start with the finished product, uh, walk you through what that experience looks like, and then we will go into, hey, how did we get to that place, right? So that's what I want to do. So as you can see, this is the uh, HR site, the human resources site for uh, the best organization, the most popular organization, Contoso uh, Electronics, sponsored by Microsoft, obviously. And you have the site that is showing content in the uh, language of the user, which in this case turns out to be English. So as you can see, there is all is a, is a nice news web part that's showcasing news. There's a bunch of links in there, a call out. There is footer at the bottom of the uh, page and uh, site navigation and you will also notice that there is a hub navigation that is showing all the uh, the uh, the site is a hub and you have a hub navigation spanning the multiple sites of this hub. So this would be the simple experience of folks uh, are all already familiar with English being the, typically the most demoed language and most used language in these communication sites as it is. But when we think about multilingual, so I'm now going to take this URL and I, as an under, another user, a Spanish user of the site, I'm going to access this, uh, of this tenant, I'm gonna access the site. As you can see, the same URL automatically redirected the user to the Spanish version of the homepage of the site. So 
as a user, I do not have to remember any specific URLs. The default site, the same site can be shared with all of the users. And based on the preferred language of the end user, we automatically send the user to the corresponding page that they have requested if it's available in their language. Obviously, this site has been set up in Spanish and English, and this user being a Spanish user automatically lands on the Spanish homepage. And not only that, you will notice that the navigation experiences are all uh, available in Spanish. The site name is Spanish. And if you scroll down to the bottom, the site footer is also available in Spanish. And Ultimate all the content on this page is available in Spanish. As a Spanish user, I have some, and I'm looking at the news articles here. And as you can see, if the news is available in my language, I automatically see that language news rolled up. But for if some reason the news is only published in uh, English and you only see the English language news showing up. This way we make sure that the end user is not missing out on content because it's not yet published. So we want to make sure that all available content is surfaced to the end user and multilingual aspect comes on top of that. So if it's available in your language, we will show you that as your preferred experience. So I'm going to go click on this first news article. I'm not I'm going to attempt reading this, but it's about uh, new options for benefits. And you are reading this article in, in Spanish and you might wonder as a user, hey, how about I check this out in English as well? And now you see that there is an affordance for that on the top right side. There is a drop down with the language selector. You choose the English version of it. And now, oh, this is the actual English version of the actual of the news article that you are attempting to read. So from there on, you have indicated to the site that you would continue reading uh, the page content in English. You will see that the rest of the site Chrome has maintained the information architecture of the site itself is anchored in the preferred language. This language selector is just for the context of reading the content is switched over to English. You go back to the home page and now you will see that all of the content is now in English and I can continue consuming the content in English. Even though my, the user's preferred language is uh, Spanish, they are choosing to co read content in English. At any time, they can switch back to the available uh, Spanish and they will go back to their uh, default user experience. And this their default user experience will also continue when if they close the browser and come back to the site uh, at a different time or in a different computer, their default experience will always be honored and the page level language selection is applicable only for the context of that content. So as you can see, this is the end user experience that we are after. We want to make sure that the end users can directly land on the language experience of their choice as indicated by the uh, preferred language in their user profile. And they also have the added uh, ability to switch between available languages when those content is published by the content creators. So now with that said, now let's step into how did we get to this place? How did a content creator get to this place? And as always, the journey begins with creation of a site. So I've switched over to another user who is an admin on this uh, 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 tenant and will begin the uh, journey of a demo site with the creation of a site. Obviously, I'm going to start with the communication site. I'm going to call this demo site. And you will notice that there is a select language option in the site creation experience. This is something to keep in mind. It's extremely important in this journey. So the default language of a site is picked at the creation time and it cannot be modified after the site has been created. So if you are building a multilingual portal for your organization, you want to think about what is the default language that I want for the site. And the, the reason it is important is any page or any news article, SharePoint news article that is created in that site will be first created in that default language and then translated into the additional languages. For that reason, it's important to remember and pay attention to the, the default language. Again, for the ease of my demo, I'm going to stick with the English language and I will pick a blank and I will finish. So uh, within a matter of seconds, now you've created the much familiar communication site and it has the basic uh, construct setup. So what I'm going to do as the owner of the site is then go enable the multilingual feature. So you do that by going into the site settings experience. As you all know, you go to the site information panel and then go into view all site settings. And in the site settings, you will notice that there is a language settings option. You click on that. And now we have revamped this page completely 
and that begins you with a question that asked do you want to enable pages and news so this basically enables pages and news to be translated this is the multilingual publishing feature modern publishing feature that gets enabled obviously there is an available english language and then you type in another supported language i'm going to uh, pick spanish i'm most comfortable trying to juggle between spanish and english and as you notice there is an option for translators so this is the experience where an individual site will have multiple languages and each language has a translator associated with uh, that language who is then responsible for the translation of the default language content into their language and there is notifications involved by having this uh, person in here it is completely an optional field you can have a multilingual site without uh, uh, requiring to provide a translator email but having a translator email uh, results in benefits and i'll show you with the notification scenarios what those are so i have already created a spanish user renata who is going to act as a, a translator for spanish and as you can see you can uh, enable n number of these uh, out of the box available languages portuguese russian uh, thai you have german korean japanese all of these languages you can add n number of these languages and each of these languages can have associated translators or you could do an alternative thing you can have all translators in a security group and just basically add that security group to all the languages so all la all translators get the notification about all languages it might not be preferred in some scenarios but that flexibility is uh, is completely in your hands you can choose to have one or a few users or a security group office 365 group associated with every language in your organization and this is as far as the site owner's job goes so now the site owner has configured the site to be multilingual enabled and selected another language and assigned a translator for that language so with that the site owner's job is uh, complete and now we can begin the journey of what it means to uh, start doing uh, uh, site experiences in multiple languages this is obviously a blank home page so i'm going to begin by just simply adding a uh, two web parts that i wanted to demo i'm going to have a uh, obviously a text web part i will add that in here this is the english home page and i'm going to add another web part which is news and uh, which gives you a roll up experience typically the home page of large internet sites uh, you know have roll up experiences have static content have quick links for example all of these things are translatable for the sake of the demo i'm going to stick with a text and a uh, a news roll up experience and one thing i want to note is uh, whatever the the way that works in a news roll up is also how it typically works with the highlighted content web part both these web parts are uh, enabled for multilingual experiences and i'm going to show you what that means so i will call this english news on this demo site and um uh, i am done with setting up the simple page on the site and what i intend to do here is engage with this translations button here and as you notice this button showed up because the multilingual feature was enabled on the site you click on this and there is a, a panel experience which tells you uh, you can create a copy of this page for the translation experience so english page has been created and once the english page is created you then make a copy of this english page for the spanish translations and that is what this panel enables um, because there is just one language i'm just going to click on create here what this create gesture does is makes an identical copy of this english page puts it in a special folder for the spanish language and makes that available for the spanish user to continue translations if you all notice there was a soft ping sound and that is the sound of <coughs> a email that was sent out so i'm going to switch to the email tab and as you can see the email was sent to renata who is a translator for the spanish language and it says spanish translation is requested so because the uh the english admin who is uh, uh, created the page and requested the translation the spanish translator received the email so i'm going to go ahead and complete the english content creators job which is actually publishing the home page with this content now i'm going to switch over to the spanish users mailbox and as you can see you as any if you think about the flow 
the spanish users uh, get the spanish translator gets the, the email that says the request uh, translation has been requested and that person can then click on start translating it uh, okay this is an important thing to notice that i missed in my demo so you want to make sure that all translators have access to the site after you've added them as a translator so i'm going to go back i'm going to share so uh, the fact that you've added a person as a translator does not automatically give them shared uh, shared permissions so you want to make sure that uh this the translator has permissions and i'm going to replay that i will start translating and this will basically uh land <coughs> the the you can see the call out here this page has not been translated into spanish yet edit to start translations so as the spanish translator of the site i have been sent to the spanish url for the home page which is a separate page and now i can just go edit this page and may i can call this this is the spanish home page and all of this news is spanish news so i have set up the the basic home page construct and i will publish this page uh typically if the actions are, don't happen within a 20 minute window there will be a return notification that goes to the site administrator the 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 uh, english crea content creator that the spanish translation has been published but i'm going to continue focusing on what it means to update the rest of the page uh, in here so as you can uh, as you will notice the the site name and all of the navigation contents are still showing english and let's go set up the site chrome experience the site name and the site navigation experience as the english author first so i've switched back to this english user this english user is going to call it uh, the demo site is fine uh, that i'm going to remove the out of the box nodes that show up with a communication site and create custom nodes so i'm going to call this uh on page is a top level node item here i'm going to add another node item here uh and call it let's see uh top news how about that so these are things that i can quickly translate off the top of my head in spanish so for the sake of the demo there are two new navigation nodes and i'm going to come to the footer here as you can see at the bottom of the page <clears throat> there is a footer i click on the edit and i'm going to add uh, a footer item again i'm just going to call it a header so i don't have to bother with the url i'm going to call it feedback so typically you have footer serve as the place where contact us or give provide feedback some sort of a, the end of the page uh, yeah ia anchoring experience uh, exists and i'm just adding a, an element in there there you go the the feedback uh, uh, item showed up so now switching back to the translator experience as the spanish translator i will have to change the navigation experiences in the corresponding language so i will go into the uh, edit experience for the navigation and instead of home page i am going to i think the translation is uh uh there you go i think this is the translation for home page and for top news uh if you're wondering i'm copying it from a notebook that i have already <laughs> have all of this content that's a long translation for top news but that's fine so i have translated the navigation content and i will be translating the footer content so as you can see all of these content can be translated uh, by uh, when a user with that corresponding language and the permissions logs into the site so a spanish user logged into the site they are they have full control over the site they can then add the spanish labels for the same navigation experiences uh this is a tough one. retro i think i got it here there there you go so now the site name uh, uh site um the site navigation and site footer is done i will go do that with the site name i will change the demo site to 
So as you can see, uh, <coughs> this site is now uh, the site name because the user's language uh, is Spanish. And I'm wondering why the Spanish experience hasn't synced in yet. So the it typically takes for a new site to sync in the user profile information of users. And once it is done, uh, the, the site language trans will automatically respond uh, to the person's language experience. So as you can see, the English is published and then now the Spanish page is available as well. So now this is the Spanish page. Now let's go through the experience of actually creating a news article. So I'm going to switch back to the English author and I will go in here and I'm going to add a news post. Uh, I will pick a blank news post. I'm going to create this. This is... News one, I'll add your text. And I can choose to say, uh, I will want to change the image. We have our wonderful file picker experience. And one thing I want to call out to the stock images that we recently shipped out. Uh, awesome images available for free for you to use. Uh, if I could actually find the image. There you go. I want to pick this. So, <clears throat> So I will, and before I post this news article, I want to kick off the translations. I'm happy with this. I'm going to kick off the translations. And uh, the English author's job is to finish the English page and kick off this uh, uh, Spanish page creation, which then automatically sends the email. And then the, jo the job is handed over to the Spanish translator, uh, translator to finish the work. So from that point of view, I'm going to finish this uh, news post experience. And as you can see, the English news item shows the English news role, the one news item that's rolled up in English. So <clears throat> I'm not going to wait for the email. I'm going to switch into this. So if you refresh this page, you will see that this is uh, the English news is still showing. So because I am the Spanish, I have logged in as a Spanish translator. I'm going to click on the Spanish. Uh, I'm going to the email arrived right now. So I'm going to uh, uh, do the do the translation uh, work right now. So as you can see, Spanish translation requested for English news. Duan, uh, the translator will begin. Uh, you click on this and get into the translation experience. So the, the same uh, call out shows up, and there is an a, info, a, um, uh, useful text in here that reminds the user that this page requires the Spanish translation. So I'm going to tra translate. Let's call the Spanish. News one sample Spanish content. OK, so one thing I would like to do is maybe for a Spanish user, I would prefer to have a different background image than this green version. So one of the things with uh, uh, the language content is and the architectural approach that we have chosen is, is it allows for each of these individual pages to be semantically connected to each other as the translations of each other but it also allows the individual page to have its own structure and content that best suits the person reading that content. So if there is a, if you can think of a world of uh, an English page for, you know, English speaking users, and let's say an Arabic page for Arabic speaking users, you might think that the same uh, you know, images might not be appropriate. You might choose to have different images while the content and the message conveyed might be identical. There might be some scenarios where different images uh, make sense, and that, that's the that to enable that such scenarios, we have uh, come up with a model of making sure that uh, the page can have its own image. So there is no tight coupling between the default language page and the translation page. They are linguistically connected; they're loosely coupled to make sure the end user experience is uh, seamless. But from a content creator point of view, they have full control over the page to do as they will with the page and make sure that the best uh, experience is delivered for that specific language. So just for kicks, I'm going, I'm going to change this to a different image. Uh, 
and post the news. So now when I go from the English to the Spanish homepage, you will see that the Spanish news is rolled up automatically. So this is the uh, the setup experience, the news, and also the uh, the highlighted content web part work in the same way. So without extra effort, as long as the content is published in English and in Spanish, you will notice that the English content will roll up when the English homepage is visited, and the Spanish content is rolled up when the Spanish page is visited and the Spanish page will automatically be the default page for end users whose language the site is understood and that their end user language is Spanish and the user uh, will automatically be routed to that Spanish language content. So now what I want to get into is the, the, the I'm going to go back to the, the first site that we had, which is the HR work site. So I'm, um, I'm going to navigate to that as the Spanish translator of the site. So you can see. So as you can see, all of this news uh, is available in Spanish. So I'm going to simulate the experience of what happens when, uh, uh, let's say, a page is updated. So one of the important aspects of uh, having content in multiple languages is making sure that content is in sync. You want to make sure that when an update is made, we've, we've seen the scenario where the first time a default language page is created and the translation is kicked off, there is a notification that goes to the translator informing them that a translation is required. Now let's think of a scenario where uh, an already published language content is updated. What happens then? How do you make sure that uh, the, the, the content is uh, appropriately updated and this is where the translation comes into picture as well so um what i want to actually do is uh go to the english user um as the I'm trying to figure this out so i will go in here so <clears throat> i am the um the English author of this page. So oh, I'm going into this uh, 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 page in here and I'm going to edit this and say, please stop by HR offices to pick up 401k. So I'm going to edit this to say by end of month, uh, April 2020 to pick up. So this is an important update. I think it is important. So I've, I've made this update and I, now I've saved this uh, uh, new update and making sure that I have the uh, right updates done and I will go ahead and then update the news. So if you heard the ping sound, this means that the translator now received the email. English version of this was updated. So what I can do is because it says it was updated, I want to go and see what the update was. So I'm, I am, uh, if you did not notice this, I actually clicked this item here in the email is a hyperlink to the, the default language content. I clicked on that and it loaded the, the default language page. And what I can do is I can, I, I'm on the English page in here. I clicked on the page details and at the bottom there is the page diffing experience, the visual page diffing experience that we recently shipped out. If uh, this toggle means that I can look at it visually. Oh, I can clearly say that see that these this text was added to this, and as the Spanish translator, uh, I can determine that this is required or not for my Spanish version of the page, and then either reject it or keep that. In this case, it sounds like an, it's an important update, and I would then go back, update the translation, which will bring me into the the. Spanish version of the page and I would I'm just going to call this updated or date so just just to I can't figure out where to add the Spanish translation so I'm just going to do this and I can go ahead and publish this page so this is the making sure that content is aligned is um, again uh, individual pages can have their own journey and not all changes are required to be 
applied. If there was a typo that was fixed in the English version, the default version, it may not be required uh, for the uh, the translation. So it might the translator just ignores the change and moves on. There's nothing done. So this way, it's the people who make sure that the content is in sync, and the system makes sure makes sure that the people are notified at the appropriate times to enable them. Uh, to make the decision of what changed and make the decision for themselves for whether the page needs the update or not. So now so the third notification scenario that I want to uh, show is when the translation is published. So, so far I have not shown you that. So uh, to that effect, I'm, um, I'm going to go back to, I've already prepped this. So typically all of these notifications and changes happen on a longer time scale than a, a 40 minute demo window that I'm having here. So I'm 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 uh, piecemealing the experience together. But typically over a, a page creation takes over a period of time. And once the translator is notified, the translator is going to take uh, X amount of time before they actually engage with this. So what we've done from a system point of view is we've uh, engineered some level of heuristic intelligence to make sure that there is not too much noise with notification. So that is why uh, within a 20 minute window, you will not see too many notifications to the same user. So we want to make sure that uh, if if a person is making changes and saving the page, there isn't a, con a constant stream of page updated emails going to the end user. We want to make sure that there is a, a level of uh, a batching logic uh, associated with this experience. So the translators can be notified at an appropriate time or the uh, page creators can be the outcome. Uh, the default author creators can be notified at the appropriate time. So I will demonstrate that here. So I have, so I've logged in as a translator. You can see that the, the only the English version is is uh, published in here. Okay, so this is this is the page. So. So as you can see, uh, this Spanish version of the page has not yet been published. It has been available as a draft for a while. So for, in, in this demo experience, I'm just going to uh, actually publish this. So this is the completion of the experience where the, uh, the primary page was created, the default language page was created, uh, and it was then submitted for translation and then the translation was completed and now you will go and see that the Spanish translation was published. This is the email you can expect uh, uh, when the translation has been published and the page creator will be notified that the Spanish translation has been published. So uh, just to recap the scenarios end to end, so you would see And just like the site navigation and the site footer, you will also be able to have a multilingual experience for the hub navigation. So, so as the English author, I'm able to come and set up the, the full navigation in the English language and the same site, you log in as uh, the uh, Spanish author and then you will be able to edit and add the Spanish labels to the same navigation nodes uh, for the hub navigation. So. Essentially, with the combination of hub navigation, site navigation, site name, pages and news being available in multiple languages, and the footer also available in multiple languages, you now have a cohesive multilingual site experience that can be presented to your end users. And the end users will make sure that the preferred language content is automatically provided when that language is published and individual end users can switch between available languages using this drop down experience and for the creators when a page is created translate and, and translations are requested the translators are notified once the translations are published the page creators are notified and if the default language page is updated with new content the translators are also notified in that scenario uh, making sure that the content can be kept in sync uh, across the multiple languages uh, and uh, as I mentioned, here is the example. So you, uh, in the English page, there is the quick links web part, which is all in English. And typically this is where the translator would spend the time, make a copy of this page in Spanish, and then they will go enter the Spanish content for this. 
So all the Spanish users can see the uh, the Spanish quick link experiences here. Um, that concludes my demo piece of it. Um, are there questions? Anything, Matt, Vesa? Any anything that's so, jumping out at so us? Matt was pretty much Matt, Matt and Julie were covering pretty much all of the questions uh, actively on the chat. So that went really well. And you, by the way, get a lot of feedback on that great demo and walkthrough of the feature. I think it's 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 a great feature. Absolutely. A uh, few questions. Uh, there's a there's a comment related on deleting. So there was a comment related on if if the source file is deleted, are we actually deleting then the, the copies? But that's not the case, right? Yes. So uh, because yeah. the pages, yes, you know, we do, the system does not automatically delete the content. Um, if the default language page is deleted, obviously the other pages are sort of orphaned. They do not have a default page, but the content itself will remain in there. So we will not, we, the system will not delete content even if the languages are removed. For example, if, if the Spanish language is removed from the, uh, the, the site experience, the Spanish pages themselves are not deleted. Going forward, Spanish will not be supported as a language for translations, but previously translated content will just remain in there. It will still be available for end users to uh, read and uh, get it and you know get access as long as those permissions have not been revoked, but the content itself will not be deleted. Yep. Now there's a good question from Jack uh, related on demo on a hub side and org site and, and then Newer organization wide site. So to be clear, even a hub site or an org site, any site can be enabled to be a hub site or disabled to be a hub site. And all of these features what we're seeing here works on any communication site. Yes, right? that is correct. Yes, correct. Exactly. And one thing I will also call out: um, the fact that this site is a hub does not mean that all the associated sites are also automatically multilingual enabled. So the multilingual enablement is at an individual site scope level. So the hub is the hub allows you to connect a bunch of sites together for a cohesive navigation and IA experience. So if you want a multilingual experience in your entire hub, you will have to go enable the languages, appropriate language in across every site individually. And the reason we are not, uh, we, we'll, we're taking feedback on this and we'd love to hear thoughts around this. So it's not that all the sites in the same hub will have the same set of languages. It's possible that there is a, a, a you know a site with English and Spanish, something else would be Spanish and German, and some other site would be you know, you know, English, German, and Korean, for example. It's possible that multiple sites have multiple languages depending on the content it's trying to serve and the audience it is intended for. But the hub will make sure that when a user lands on this, the home page of the hub site, they get the language experience of their preferred language, the preferred language experience, which includes the hub navigation, site navigation, and uh, the site footer. And the news and the pages, if they are available in their language, will automatically roll up. And if it's not available, the default language of the web will be uh, shown. And there's a caveat there with the, with the English language, but English language is typically preferred whenever it's available. Uh, it's, it's a historic uh, construct of SharePoint. And again, that's another uh, scenario where we are taking feedback. Uh, but in general, the web default language will be shown to a user if their if their preferred language is not available, for example, if a Spanish user lands on a site that's enabled only for Spanish and Ger uh, I mean a uh, German and Korean, and German is a default, the Spanish user will end up seeing the German language experience because that is the site uh, default language experience. Cool. Have any other things? Uh, so Jack is um, referring to org site as the home site for your organization. Home site for your organization can be a communication site. And it's a yes, just as well. the home site is a communication site. site and it, it can be multilingual as well. And it can also be hub enabled. All of that is true. So uh, recapping here, so we, are, we will be generally available. Hopefully by the, uh, we, we're, we're working on rolling it out. Uh, it takes a few weeks for the rollout to complete. So by end of May, all of you should have this feature. And uh, we we'll look forward to engaging with you all and getting feedback and look forward to the usage. Absolutely. And, and uh, DC is pretty uh, active on the on the Twitter and the social media as well. Uh, so uh, you can ping him at DC Padur 
on the what we can see on the screen. Now I'm going to steal the presentation uh, because we because we're closing up. Yep. Thank there you. Two thank minutes. you, Lisa. Thank you all. Yep. yep. Thank you, everybody. Good discussion on the chat window. It's a few slides just to recap on on the things because these things are coming up. No Q, time for Q and A uh, on top of what we were having. Um, the recording will be available in 24 hours in our Microsoft 365 and SharePoint community YouTube channel, again as M365 PMP videos. We have now more past the 15,000 subscribers on that one, so um, there's plenty of uh, relevant content over there as well. The next Microsoft 365 general dev call is on April 16th, uh, so the Thursday this week, where we're going to talk about new things in the list formatting and column formatting. Uh, there's a, a product group demo on that one. There's also a product group uh, demo on uh, the taxonomy APIs, which is pretty cool. And then Irvin Van Hoon is going to demonstrate some cool stuff on the PMP PowerShell side as well. And the SharePoint framework call is a week from now, a week from now, Thursday, and then the next monthly community call on May 12th. Uh, all of the community calls are recorded and published through the YouTube channel. So just to recap on that as well. But that's it uh, from our side. Uh, we do have plenty of community calls. We know that we have plenty of community calls. So um, follow up on the YouTube channels on the recordings, which are the ones which you actually want to pop in and drop by. Um, thank you for again, again being super active on this call. And by the way, for those who are watching the recording, we do apologize. We hit again the 250 attendee limit. So some people could not unfortunately get in to the call. We're trying to figure out how to make that happen in the future. There are certain scenarios and the limitations even with Microsoft Teams events. So, and that's the reason why we haven't actually started doing that. <coughs> Let's see if we'll do that in the future. But that's it from our side. Thank you everybody for joining and have a great rest of your day. Uh, stay safe and hopefully we'll see you in the upcoming community calls as well. Thank you, Matt. Thank you, DC, uh, for the great, Thanks. great demos today. Thanks everybody. Thanks. Bye-bye. Thank you.